preventing tail strike during go around near the ground. Coming up. A320. Mentor Channel. Preventing Tail Strike During Go Around Near the Ground. The focus of this article is go around near the ground, sometimes called rejected landing. This follows our previous article, a focus on the landing flare article published September 2020 and a focus on the takeoff rotation published January 2021. Those articles provided recommendations for avoiding tail strikes when performing landing flare and takeoff rotation. There is also a higher risk of tail strike when a go around is required near the ground. This article provides additional recommendations and observations for flight crews to help them avoid tail strike events during this phase. Case study one, event description. An A320 aircraft was performing in our NAV approach on a day with good weather conditions. The meter indicated wind with a 10 knots headwind component and a negligible crosswind. The landing was intended to be done in configuration full. The VAP was 137 knots. The first officer, who was the PF, disconnected the autopilot at 930 feet RA and maintained the auto thrust on. At 500 feet, the approach was stabilized. Nose down input and wind gradient at 80 feet. At 80 feet RA, the PF applied one third of full nose down input, figure one. Simultaneously, the wind, which was about five knots headwind, suddenly changed to a three knots tailwind. The aircraft pitch reduced from plus 3.5 degrees at 80 feet to plus 2.5 degrees at 40 feet. Go around initiation during a light bounce. From 40 feet RA, the PF started the flare with a progressive nose up input up to a full nose up input in the last 10 feet. Thrust levers were retarded to idle at 10 feet RA. The pitch increased from plus 2.5 degrees up to plus 9 degrees up at touchdown. The aircraft bounced slightly while the ground spoilers started to extend, and the PF maintained an average one-third nose-up input for two seconds. The pitch reached plus 12 degrees when the PF applied toga thrust and applied a full nose-up input. Tail strike during the second touchdown. The aircraft touched down a second time during the engine spool-up and ground spoilers retraction. A tail strike occurred with a pitch of plus 12.7 degrees at a speed of 127 knots, V at minus 10 knots. The PF maintained the full nose up input for one more second. The aircraft speed at that point was 122 knots, V at minus 15 knots. The PF then partially released the nose up input to one third of full nose up input. The pitch reduced to plus 11 degrees and the aircraft achieved liftoff when the speed reached 128 knots. The PF continued the go around maneuver and performed a successful second approach. Event analysis. Light bounce due to high vertical speed and high pitch at touchdown. Both the wind gradient and PF input at 80 feet RA created a lift reduction that led the aircraft vertical speed to increase to minus 800 feet per minute at 40 feet RA. The flare reduced the vertical speed, which was still minus 350 feet per minute at the first touchdown. The energy returned through the main landing gear shock absorbers, combined with the lift provided by the high pitch at touchdown, plus 9 degrees, caused the aircraft to bounce. Continuous nose up input during the bounce and full back stick input at the initiation of the go around near the ground caused the tail strike. The ground spoilers extension during the bounce reduced the lift and caused the second touchdown. The continuous nose up input of the PF after the first touchdown, in addition to the full nose up input when toga was selected, led to the pitch increase from plus 9 degrees to plus 12.7 degrees, which caused the tail strike on the second touchdown. Case Study 2 
Event Description An A330 aircraft was performing an ILS approach with good visibility, but in gusty wind conditions. The intended landing configuration was configuration full. The approach was stabilized at 500 feet RA. The first officer, who was PF, disconnected the autopilot and kept the auto thrust on. The VAP was 139 knots. From 90 feet RA, figure 2, the PF alternated nose down and nose up inputs, leading to a nose down tendency. The pitch reduced from plus 5.5 degrees to plus 2.5 degrees at 30 feet. The flare was initiated at 30 feet by application of a close to full nose up input, which was partially released and then followed by another full nose up input just prior to touchdown. The thrust levers were retarded to idle simultaneously at the point of the hard touchdown. The pitch was plus 7 degrees and the speed was 135 knots, V at minus 4 knots, decreasing. The PF maintained one half full nose up input for two seconds and then set the thrust levers to the toga detent combined with a full nose up input. The captain simultaneously applied one third nose down input briefly, which led to a dual input call out. The engines began spooling up to toga thrust, but the speed was still decreasing and the pitch increasing due to the full nose up inputs applied by the PF. A tail strike occurred and the pitch reached 10.9 degrees at a speed of 116 knots, V at minus 23 knots. The aircraft then accelerated and liftoff was achieved at around 130 knots. The PF continued the go-around maneuver and performed a successful second approach. Event Analysis Hard landing caused by a nose-down tendency at 30 feet and a late flare. The alternate nose-up and nose-down inputs, between 90 feet and 30 feet, led to a vertical speed increase from minus 550 feet per minute at 90 feet up to minus 850 feet per minute at 30 feet when the PF started the flare. This late flare, combined with the high vertical speed, led to the hard landing. Continuous nose-up inputs after touchdown and full back stick order at low speed led to the tail strike. The PF maintained a nose-up input after the touchdown, leading the pitch to increase from 7 degrees to 8.5 degrees when the go-around was initiated. The PF then applied full nose-up input simultaneously with the toga thrust selection while the aircraft speed was as low as 116 knots, V at minus 23 knots. This led to the tail strike. Dual input. The brief nose down input performed by the captain without pressing the side stick priority push button when the go around was initiated was not sufficient to counteract the full nose up demand by the first officer. Operational considerations. Between January 2022 and September 2024, 49 tail strike events were reported to Airbus with 5, 10% during takeoff, 23, 47% during landing, and 21, 43% during a go-around near the ground, figure 3. Performing a safe go-around near the ground. The PF and the PM must carefully monitor the pitch during the maneuver. When going around close to the ground, both the PF and the PM must carefully monitor the pitch during the maneuver. The PM must make the pitch callout when the pitch reaches the value provided in the standard callout chapter of the SOP. Avoid high rotation rate. The application of full back stick by the flight crew was reported in many of the tail strikes during go around near to the ground events. This was a common contributor to these events as this action led to a high rate of rotation. When performing a go-around near the ground, the PF and PM must monitor the pitch and the PF must avoid excessive nose-up input, figure 4. Retract flaps and landing gear only when safely established into the go-around. During a go-around near the ground, the flight crew must delay the flaps and landing gear retraction until the aircraft is established on its go-around trajectory, figure 4. Delaying the flaps retraction prevents the need for higher pitch in the early stage of the maneuver when the aircraft is closer to the ground. Landing gear contact with the ground may happen. If the go-around is initiated when the aircraft is very close to the ground, the landing gear may contact the runway. 
The PF should not try to avoid this contact by further increasing the pitch. Manage the energy of the aircraft. In many reported cases of tail strike during the go-around, the high nose of demand applied when the aircraft was on the ground and at low speed led to the tail strike. If engines are at idle when the go-around is initiated, they can take a few seconds to spool up. The flight crew should wait until the aircraft speed reaches at least VAP to rotate the aircraft, figure 5. Don't try to avoid a second touchdown in the case of a go-around initiated during a bounce. If a go-around is initiated during a bounce, the PF should maintain the pitch, allowing a second touchdown to happen. Then the PF can further adjust the pitch, ask the PM to retract one flap setting and retract the landing gear, figure 6. Only one flight crew flies at a time. Case study 2 shows that the PM may intend to take control in such dynamic situations. As per the FCTM chapter about the use of side stick, only one flight crew flies at a time. If the PM intends to apply inputs using the side stick, they must do the following actions. Clearly announce I have control. Press and maintain the side stick priority push button in order to get full control of the fly-by-wire system. The flight crew should keep in mind that side stick inputs are algebraically added and the dual input alert triggers if the priority push button is not pressed and maintained. In case study 2, the dual input of the PM on the captain's side stick did not prevent the tail strike. In other reported cases, the dual input from the PM in the same direction as the PF increased the inputs up to an equivalent of full nose up, and the resulting increased rate of rotation contributed to the tail strike. Thrust reverser selection means full stop. It is important to recall the SOP that states the flight crew must not initiate a go-around once the reversers have been selected. In several tail strike events reported to Airbus, the go-around was initiated after the reverser's selection. This contributed to the tail strike due to the reduction of the aircraft speed before the go-around was initiated. The time taken for the thrust reversers to retract and lock also causes a delay of the engine spool up to toga. Performing a go around near the ground is a very dynamic phase with a risk of tail strike. If a go around is initiated, the maneuver must be completed. To ensure a safe go around near the ground, the flight crew must avoid application of inputs that lead to a high rate of rotation, retract flaps and retract the landing gear only when the aircraft is safely established in the go-around maneuver. If the landing gear is in brief contact with the ground, this is acceptable. The PF should not try to avoid this contact by further increasing the pitch. If the engines are already at idle when the go-around is initiated and the aircraft energy is low, the flight crew should wait until the aircraft speed reaches at least V app to rotate the aircraft. Do not try to avoid the secondary touchdown in the case of a go-around initiated during a bounce. The PF should maintain the pitch, allowing a potential second touchdown to happen. Then the PF can further adjust the pitch, ask the PM to retract one flap setting and retract the landing gear when the aircraft is established on its go-around trajectory. In all cases, it is important to recall that the SOP requires that a flight crew must not initiate a go-around once the reversers have been selected. For further reading about avoiding tail strikes in other phases, you can read a Focus on the Landing Flare article published September 2020 and a Focus on the Takeoff Rotation published January 2021. A320. Mentor Channel.